Spice FM K E YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or www.spicefm.co.ke. We are live on KTN Home in Yeri and other parts of the country. We are also live in Malindi, 97.7. In Nakuru, it's 96.0. 96.7 in Eldoret. Kisumu, 102.5. 87.9 in Mombasa. And Nairobi, 94.4. So, Commission on University Education. If there's one thing parents in this country of Kenya agree on, mm. is the importance of educating their children. And parents allocate, they put aside almost every resource that they have at their disposal to ensuring that their children actually get an education that they can afford. Mm. The understanding is that beyond primary and secondary education, they will have some training, post-secondary school training. Hopefully, if they can afford it and if they're qualified for it, uh, a diploma, certificate, perhaps even a degree. And for those who have the energy and the will, they pray that the children will pursue even higher academic qualifications. The understanding for the longest time was that with these qualifications, you, were then, you then had some guarantee of a job. Mm -hmm. People like myself, in the time when we graduated, uh, we, well, from our degrees in the university, we actually had letters of appointment waiting for us even before we had finished our exams. But in this 21st century, that is history that is so far gone that it almost represents an unreality. People have their qualifications and jobs aren't as forthcoming as had been presumed. But then, even with the understanding, something else has happened. In the last two decades, one of the biggest growth industries in this country has been the education sector. Mm -hmm. More so in higher learning. We've had a sprouting of universities, colleges, and with them we've had a sprouting of many, many people who hitherto had not had an opportunity to learn, having learning brought to their doorsteps, right within the areas in which they live. Now this positive proliferation of education has also led to something that perhaps is a little less favorable than just the proliferation. And that is the proliferation of qualifications and institutions that don't quite meet the required standards. Now, when you talk about standards, you have to ask, are there standards? Then the answer is yes. In this country, we have the Commission of University Education that oversees these standards. Mm. The Ministry of Education is the umbrella ministry under which every learning in this country falls under. But the Commission on University Education oversees this. Now, when I say oversee, what do I mean? What I mean is, before an institution gets what people refer to as a charter, mm or accreditation, they must begin as some form of learning institution. And they are then told what it is that is required of them. You are informed. Because when you want to set up an institution, you seek permission, you seek licensure, and you are told. Then this commission will send individuals over a period of time to determine whether you meet that standard. Now, the standard is based on not just the courses you offer, but the qualification of the staff who are in those institutions that guarantee that the quality that is required by that particular commission are met. Mm -hmm. Now, after that long process, you then get what I'm losing the inverted certification. That certification in academic terms is called accreditation. Now, in this country, we have that one organization. If you go to the U.S., I mentioned the U.S. because people go to the U.S. in large numbers in this country. The accreditation isn't conducted by one body. In that vast country, you have regional accreditation bodies, whether it is the Western accreditation body, the Middle accreditation body, and so forth. In the UK, it's also different. They have an independent commission that actually deals with these matters, but independent, but government-owned. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a continuous process. For many countries, the accreditation takes after every five years, the process of determining whether the processes and the standards which are required have been maintained is carried out. Now, recently, in compliance with this, the Commission on um, University Education in Kenya has determined that beyond understanding and determining, uh, ratifying the quality uh, assurance of the qualifications we have in this country, qualifications that are acquired outside the country, they require those qualifications to go under the same rigorous uh, attention. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2015, an interesting body was set up in this country to help with this sort of thing. It's called the National Qualifications Authority. 
Now, the National Qualification Authority was set up in 2015, okay? Now, what they do, for instance, if you want to determine and to understand whether your qualification meets the master, they have a website. And all you do is you register, and they have a portal, and you can then follow the details. They are quite detailed, and they explain to you what you need to do. Mm. Now, why this is important, again, is because of the unfavorable thing I mentioned earlier. There are many institutions that offer degrees internationally and locally, and some of them don't quite meet that particular master set up by these institutions. Now, it is even more so once online education came into being. Because with online education, all that was required by many of these institutions, what you call accreditation, again from these bodies. Now, many Kenyans, especially now during the COVID times, have taken a lot of time to actually upgrade their learning and understanding. And many people are getting educated. And many people qualify. Mm. But the question is, do these qualifications meet the master? Now, to understand this, you need to understand, is that accreditation recognized? That's the first thing that you need to understand. And you say recognize, is it an accreditation that actually exists within the boundaries of the country that you have acquired your degree? Now, you may think that that university is known. Yes, it is known. But is that particular degree that you have in that discipline, is that discipline in that university, does it meet their accreditation qualifications? I know what I'm saying sounds a little complicated, but unfortunately, in this day and age where it is even very easy for people to provide falsified documents, some of these ratifications that are being carried out in this country become mandatory and they become necessary. Now, I, for instance, took the bother of trying to determine my qualifications, whether they were ratified or whether they met the master. And, and I came across something very interesting. One of my qualifications, which offers me a title, the university had an accreditation issue with the authorities. So now, what decisions do I make? Is my qualification then ratified? Is it an authentic qualification? The institution is authentic, but there is an issue of accreditation. So does it then mean that any qualification that is offered by that particular institution is not uh, recognized or trustworthy? Mm. Do you then, if you have a title, use the title or do you not use the title? Which is which? If you are a keen reader of the papers, there are cases every once in a while that appear where an institution withdraws a qualification they gave someone. Mm. And usually it's because they feel that something that didn't meet the standards that they set had been done in that in qualifying for that particular award. So they withdraw it. We've also had situations in this country where institutions have been shut down by the authorities. Now, when that institution shut down, does it then mean that the people who took their courses in that particular institution, that their qualifications are no longer valid? See, these are questions that one may ask. There are some that decisions that are made for you. When some institutions are shut down, especially if they are government, the students are then asked to transfer to yet another institution while this particular institution sorts out their issues. But it is something that people need to take seriously because it then follows that whatever you do and whatever you have achieved, if it is based on your qualification and there is an issue either with accreditation or with a licensure or with the institution itself, then whatever you may have based your work experience and living standards on, is brought into question so yes i think it goes beyond just taking it seriously i think it's just even being aware that this is a thing yes taking it seriously it, means uh, beyond being aware you try and ensure that you are clear about it but i'm saying that many people do not know that they actually need to do this because the assumption is that once you attend an institution of higher learning that as you f you take for gospel truth you that assume that they've you done, assume that they've they've gotten all their ducks in, the ro in a yes. row and that they have all that they need to do to make sure once they're conf conferring this uh, degree to you or whatever your diploma to you that they have done what they needed to do in order for you to go on your merry way who would have thought that you then need to come back and make sure later on that they actually have everything in place and if they don't it could then shed some kind of negative light on you as an individual you talked about um an issue with accreditation of your former institution, and then that could mean whether you could or could not use a particular title that was then conferred on you by virtue of the fact that you completed that course of education. 
who would know such a thing unless now you were keen on these some of these on some of these details so you go about using this title and then somebody comes and says hold on a minute you may go because this is a, a real life situation that could happen you may go for an interview somewhere one day and somebody sitting on that panel has taken in keen interest in just this thing that we're talking about they say hold on a minute this qualification that you say now you're bringing to the table we must look at this now keenly because that institution at some point had an issue and here you are with egg on your face and you had no idea that this actually is the case whose responsibility is it though That's all the, the individuals who went to school or the institution to make sure that they get their things in order and let the people know who walked into the doors my of the point. institution why should it be my it's responsibility exactly. to do all that due diligence and background checks on an institution where do i even begin where do I start? Why do I, I start to? to know whether you have issues with any accreditation body or with the Commission for a University Education? Where do I begin? You see, the job and the onus is on the Commission for University Education, for the university itself, for whatever institution, the college, whoever is offering this to make sure that they comply. And if they don't, then that's why you have a regulator, that's why you have law enforcement, that's why you have laws. You Why were, should it be that the people who are seeking this uh, higher learning are the ones who, before you enroll in a certain university, in a certain college, or for a certain program? Because you can also even go into a certain university, but that particular program has not been accredited, accredited. by mm. yes. the K. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> Why should it be my head? It's a minefield, no. isn't it? Yes. In Kenya, the Commission on uh, University Education mm. provides you the list of all the universities, private and public, that they have accredited. Mm -hmm. Now, I think what they should also do in addition to this is provide a list of universities or institutions of learning that claim to be accredited and are not accredited. Because they can mm. and they would know. You see, why do I say this? Issue like a buyer beware alert. Yes, because somebody <laughs> may actually get, for instance, let's say you apply to start an institution. Yeah. There's a process that you go through. Mm. Now, you may meet the early processes, but you don't get to the process of accreditation. Mm. And yet, you may be claiming you have accreditation, and yet you don't. Yeah. You are an institution, you are even licensed, but you do not have the, author the required authorization to offer the qualifications or the courses that you then offer. Yeah. You see? Now, if they publish these things and they said that some of these institutions can only offer this, because... You go through any small town in this country, there will be some college some on top college. of a shop somewhere yes. offering something or the other. Mm. There, okay. are some, there are some colleges that offer um, national exam council Examination. Yes, exams. You don't, Others, don't have a problem. You, you, you know what the exams are. But some, some of them, you don't actually know that they don't offer a national exam <laughs> council exam. <laughs> Others are supposed to be offering the ones for the, the accounts. Yes. Right? Yes. Others are supposed to be... All those institutions, and it's an institution where, right, so um, your child, your, 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 somebody has cleared fourth form and they're looking for the next thing to do. And so they go and take up this small course here, you know, I'm studying some accounts, something or the other. And you thought that the, what they're doing is actually accredited. You come to realize later that they're not accredited. Whose job is it to be doing the background? You see, it's a valid question, mm. but there is a problem here. And this is where now the individual has to make yeah. a decision. Huh? You see, at the end of the day, if due diligence is done and there is an issue with that institution, mm. now it may not affect your qualifications because they may have an issue at a time when, the ta put it this way, the issue is irrelevant to your position and to your qualification. Mm. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what if it isn't? What if it isn't? Should you then not take it upon yourself to say, look, it may not be my duty, but it actually is in my own, my interest to ensure that I have done due diligence. Because if due diligence is done and a problem arises, it will affect you. Okay, so what if you go and you find out actually, all right, because I think about the institution that uh, uh, I went to, and then at some point they were not able to open up a program for PhD in a particular field, mm -hmm. yes. right? Uh, you want to pursue it, but then you say, okay, I'm going to hold on a little bit until they finish that process. So finally, they're able to offer course for PhD philosophy in international relations. Yes. Finally, that has happened. Then you enter, you finish 
your coursework, you're conferred the degree, right? Yes. And then now you're going into whatever consultancies you start to apply for work. Mm. You do this due diligence that you're talking about. Yes. You find out that, hold on a minute, there was actually a kink in the process when they were trying to figure it out. So then I found out, so what? What am I then supposed to do? Am I supposed to go to the university and say, hold on a minute, <laughs> you guys actually, in this process, you didn't do one, two, three, and it is now impacting badly on me. How do I, sp it's still the re it is still the responsibility to then go back to whatever commission, whatever board to make sure that they've sorted out this themselves. I still am powerless. I still cannot do anything. Even accessing that information as you're doing that Where due you diligence find it? to know whether they have actually completed all the steps that they're required to complete. How will you get that information? Actually, in this... It's a painstaking process. It is. It is a painstaking process. You see, when I talk about... The, why don't I give myself as, as an example? Because mm. on matters of education, mm. it's sensitive. Even mentioning an institution by name is sensitive. Mm. What I determined to do... Mm. Because on the surface, it looks like it's something that involves processes and once they sort out the process there is no problem mm. but i made a decision and said no until i am certain that, that process has been cleared and that there are no more issues i will not use my title you see i made that decision mm -hmm. now some people may say but why are you making that decision i said but you see it is i who made the decision to study in the first place it is i all these decisions it is i who made so i make that decision it is not a decision that I think I would say, let everybody make that decision. Mm. It is up to you. All I'm saying is that I have had cases and I have seen cases reported in our dailies of situations where certain organizations have done due diligence and they've even pointed at specific institutions and specific colleges. Mm. And they have said any qualifications from these institutions will not be considered. Now, you're talking about someone who's been working in a place for the last six, seven years and they have that job and they've even risen. And then this situation arises. Mm. Now, even if we say it is an institution that is to blame, mm -hmm. surely the individual's life has already been affected, has it not? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes. And usually, if you don't do due diligence, you, the life will be affected irreversibly. This is the unfortunate thing. And yet, it is a reversible situation. Remember the issue of uh, JQuat and the cancelled PhDs, PhDs, right? Where we're talking about 296 <laughs> PhDs. Yes. And it was an issue of uh, investigations revealing glaring anomalies in the processes leading to graduation. Okay. Now, you have gone, you have registered for this particular PhD program. You have started, you're going about your, your business as normal, as best as you can. And then you come and realize later, this particular case is okay. The process was not followed uh, diligently. Others, you have gone through all that and then halfway through or even at point of completion, you realize that this particular program that you have paid for, that you've gone through in this institution is not accredited. You've already spent your time. Your money. You've spent your money. You're about to complete. You're about to complete. Hmm. So what happens? And at what point could you have done that due diligence to know that this particular program that is being offered, universities in this country are offering multiple programs. Yes. There's no university that's just offering one program that no. you can just go to choir <laughs> and, and say, okay, so this it. one, yes. No. Many. Degree, diploma, postgraduate, all those. So at what point do you now go and check whether this one meets all the standards is actually going to be accredited if i register with this one then i'm sure that what i get is going to be legit actually when you ask it that way it's almost impossible mm. because if we take a case in point of jk you mm. now what then do you do i mean the issue was they are graduating too many phds really how many is too many mm. Mm. i thought that's what the university was supposed to do but I think what they wanted to, I think now that maybe the, the deeper point was that the potency of the content, the quality of the education that they were getting then is what came into question because it wasn't possible, quote unquote, for you to be churning out so many PhDs in such a short time. One so supervisor then the, per so how then, many? So Actually. then the question, yeah, that, that was another issue. So mm. then the question came about the quality of what you're putting out 
is what came into question here because it was as though you're just passing people through you know a cheese mill like a degree, a degree mill yes, yes, yes let's just go out like that Whereas if you want to look at specialized education, a PhD is just that, specialized education. Can you really push it out? Painstaking takes a long time. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. Can you really push it out that way? And that is what came under scrutiny. That in terms of the quality, are you actually delivering quality because you want to have more individuals pushed out into society with this specialized education? You so see, you now, as, a, as let's say, you're the one who's actually applied for this PhD program, right? And you are going through it. If, let's say, at some point you realize that, wait, uh, we are too many people dealing with one supervisor. Um, the quality that I'm getting is not good. What do you do? Beyond make a complaint, I really don't see what you can do. You can complain and say, actually, you know, I don't think I'm getting enough time uh, with this uh, supervisor, number one. I don't think that he's pushing, uh, is, is giving uh, as much attention as he or she can. But beyond a complaint, what are you going to do? Yeah. You see, where, where, where this particular discussion gets interesting is that what we saw at JKU at becomes an issue when you compare it with what has happened previously and what was common in our universities. Whether you, were, whether you had entered a master's course or a PhD, the likelihood of completing it was minimal. Mm. Mm. Whatever grant you had been given, <laughs> yes, would run out before you finish before your you finish. course. Complaints were varied. You couldn't get your supervisor. You yeah. couldn't do the other. But it's like it was a bottleneck. Mm. Simply getting a master's degree was a headache at some point. It was almost, my goodness, it was a difficult thing to do. And one got the impression it was, diff it was being made difficult. PhDs, on the other hand, my goodness, you, it was, they were rare. Mm. Now, they shouldn't be that rare. Why do I say this? The moment the numbers of students in a university increases, it then follows that the numbers of people who actually teach these people also increases. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you have many students applying for a particular course, it then follows that there will be more people in that particular discipline mm -hmm. who are teaching. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is that the 290 was a large number. Mm. However, it doesn't mean that the university could not that have... It's impossible. Yes. That, I think you've understood me perfectly. Because if the university expands... Because it wasn't a PhD in just one discipline. It was in many disciplines. Sure. I'm thinking also by the time that they were saying, let's cancel this. Let's, if once investigations have revealed, they looked at all that. They looked at the capacity. They looked at they the resources being allocated they to did. this particular... And they were, they were, I would like, like to assume that they, they did. did. In and out, don't match. But you see where I'm going with this discussion is uh, mm. part of the quality assurance processes is in understanding. You see, you don't just graduate these people. You state, we have these candidatures, yes. these numbers of people whom we are working on, to end up this way, you see? So, the questions that were then being asked should have been asked earlier. Because the PhD doesn't take a year. Yep. Neither does it take yep. two years. Yep. Okay, neither does it take three years in many cases. Sometimes it takes five, even six years. So, the investigations were revealing very many things, not just yes. on the university yes. itself, yes. but on those that are supposed to. Yes. The periodical quality checking. assurance mm -hmm. ought to have been there to determine that due process is being followed when you have that number of students. You go, you acquire your program, degree, diploma, a higher national diploma, postgraduate diploma, Even a certificate. master's degree, certificate, a PhD. You have got to make sure that that is actually an accredited. <laughs> but yep. ha I'm sorry, Can I, I'm going to ask, have you got to though? And sh when yeah, they were giving out, you. when they were giving out this uh, announcement or whatever it is that it was you know shedding light on the fact that hold on these things have not been happening they should actually be speaking to the institutions that are accredited under them as a body they should not be speaking to the various degree holders or those pursuant of a degree actually, they should actually be speaking to the institutions and saying make sure that you have all your things in order because essentially what you would be doing if you don't is putting the education lives of these individuals at jeopardy Consider for a second something a little something that we see often mm. when the results of students who sit usually it's for their form four exams are cancelled. Mm. All right. Now, when those exams are cancelled, you know the impact is immediate. Huh? Mm. Mm. Now, can you imagine the despondency and the despair that parents fall in? You waited four years for this child to get here, and then the results are cancelled. Mm -hmm. 
who do we blame and what ought to have been done? Do we blame the parents? Do we blame the school? Do we blame the students? What do we do? Now, I am simply saying that where this particular shoe fits and where it bites, mm. at the end of the day, it is you the wearer, okay? So much as all these details that we're talking about are actually honestly true. However, I think what we're seeing now is something that ought to have been happening from the very beginning. The Commission on, uh, on, on University Education mm. and the Kenyan uh, Qualifications Authority ought to have, or well, they're now doing it. This is something that should be done periodically to ensure that these quality assurances exist. So it isn't just a question of, let me put it this way, it is good that it has started. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> There's the issue of the inconvenience. In 2015, there was a story in the news and 1,500 students of Moy University School of Law were affected because the Council of Legal Education ordered Moy University to close its School of Law for failing to meet requirements to offer the course. A the, the decision that threw 1,500 students into jeopardy. In the letter to the Vice Chancellor, the Council said it ordered the closure after an inspection showed that the university did not have the capacity to offer law courses. Now, <laughs> and this is not just, so this is one, all right? You, this is not a, a small time backwater university or nope. a new university. It's nope. more university, all right? An old and recognized institution. It starts a program and says, this is law. We are starting a law degree program. We are actually starting a school of law. We are going to start offering degrees. Many people chan, uh, go through this program. They graduate. And then at some point, someone comes and says, wait a minute. But you guys, some of the graduates from this have already gone to the school of law. They've already been admitted to the bar. And then you come into some, actually work, some, some, some already actually working, working. Mm -hmm. and practicing law. Then you start coming to question this at that particular point. What I, are you doing? Actually, the reason why you have these periodical assessments mm. is to determine that the standards are actually being maintained. Yep. All right. Now, whether it had been done in the previous years or whether this was now a new set of standards that were being put into place, one isn't certain because we go by what was reported. Mm. Now, the Commission on University Education is mandated. This is one of the things it must do so that you ensure that that quality that you speak of is actually maintained. So when you say you graduated from Kenyatta University with a degree in engineering, mm. it is understood it is not any different from any other university in this country that actually offers that degree. Yep. That is their job. Yep. Now, I do not know whether they had periodically gone to that university but it appears at the time when they did. This is what often happens. This is what I know. Mm. If they think there is an issue, they come with the periodic visits. You are told there is a gap here. There is a problem here. There is an Fix issue it. here. Thank you. Fix it. We will come back after this period of time. Mm -hmm. And they then come back. An opportunity is given for that rectification. So by the time they make that decision, I am of the view that they have actually asked you to sort out a problem and you have failed to sort it out. As the institution? Yes. Then there should not be any kind of penalty whatsoever on the individuals who went to this institution. If it's a government institution, what they then tell you is they transfer you. They tell you you can then continue to pursue your education at that. Now, you asked about those who are graduated. If during that particular period when they were studying, the issue had not arisen, why should they be affected? Exactly. Why should they? It means that... Oh, 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 now, here's the issue, though. If by this time, the, the, this body, which is called what? The Council of Legal Education has yes. come and determined that this particular university does not meet the requirements to offer this course. It means that there's an issue of the quality. Yes. Right? Yes. So it means that the graduates have an issue of quality. Yes. So but what at are you the, doing? At, the, at that point in time... Now, the quality we're talking about has to do so with... Are you saying that quality has deteriorated? Yes. At, at some point, you, yes. are, you had good quality yes. and then it deteriorated? Yes. Mm. Okay. So, if we say that initially, when we came five years ago, let's say it's the number of uh, lecturers that you require, the number of facilities that you required to, and the number of students that you needed per class, all those things that you met. Yes. And then later, you got greedy and increased the number of students without increasing the number of lecturers. Quality has dropped. Yes. So what about now those that have gone through? Now, that's what we are saying. Those 1,500 that are affected, 
what are you saying about the quality that they've received in the last one year? If you now transfer them from Moi to University of Nairobi, not just one, other, uni other others, other right. universities what, that what are you saying? So similar. by the time you're coming and you're in third year, do we need to reassess your first, second, and third year? I believe you have asked the one million dollar question. And that is a question that could best be answered by people who actually belong to that particular institution mm. that determines these things. Why am I saying this? I can talk generally about what is required. And I can tell you what is required to be done. But when such a decision is made, the consequences of such decisions are also considered. It's not as though they are not considered. They are considered. Mm. But as to how, well, the next steps and what and how the students because you could ask the question what if you can't transfer mm -hmm. what if you chose that particular institution for several of, reasons yes and 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 the transfer now would affect you to the point where you may not even be able to continue with your course yeah mm -hmm. what then do you do then yeah now these are the problems that people encounter and there are students who i think were affected by that decision and some of them may even be listening this is the opportunity where they, they can actually call it and say, this is how this thing affected us. Yep. Because then it falls back again directly to the institutions whose job it is to ensure that these things don't occur. How did they wait until it got to that position? How did it get to that position? Have you ever been affected by this, the issue of recognition and equation of your qualifications from whatever institution, whether it was uh, just a college with a certificate or diploma or degree or PhD, master's, just call us. Let's hear what your experience has been. 0719-012-600. That's 0719-012-600. The issue as well of you have gone abroad. You've crossed over the border. You've gone to Uganda and you've registered for this particular course. All right. Let's even say that you went through some certain education, which is not even higher education. You went through secondary education in a certain school across the border and now you want to come and join a university in kenya and that university now starts telling you know what eh? uh, we do not know what this is you're holding <laughs> <laughs> our, our minimum entry requirement is this 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 and the other we recognized we recognize kcse this grade we recognize a uh, igcse we recognize ib this thing that you're holding what is it and yes. you said you spent four years, in some cases six years, in a Study. school studying outside the country, and you're being told, Sorry. we don't recognize. Or this. as you say, across the border, mm. and the courses differ. You may have gone even for a medical course, and they ask <laughs> you, what? No, medical. Where is it exactly? Is it <laughs> now? You see, what is even nearer home is mm. you apply for a certain course and you actually qualify in this country in a public university. Uh, yes. And you go to look for a job and they ask you, okay, we understand. So what do you expect us to do with this thing exactly? <laughs> <laughs> so the question you ask is, why is it being offered in the first place? Yes. If it has no relevance. It has no relevance at all. Let's yes. hear from Mohammed who's calling in from Isiolo. Mohammed, good morning. Morning to you, sir. Ramadan morning. Mubarak, Mohammed. Ramadan Mubarak. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm calling, it is a, a very interesting topic, mm -hmm. really. Um, I did technical education also. Uh -huh. And um, currently, I'm working with uh, county government, previously national government, but mm. on the staff. Mm -hmm. But the challenges we have today is by uh, most of this young generation were not guided, mentored by um, uh, either their parents due to lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. or maybe even a professional who's supposed to guide them at the school level, which college they are supposed to join. You can find somebody join a college, go and be given an internal certificate, which is totally uh, the institution don't have authority to offer. Mm. They are not credited. And then the same people today employed with the certificate in a, in a, in a, in a, in a county institution. Mm. And then we have challenge in their performance. Mm -hmm. That's one. Secondly, my brother joined a technical university of Nairobi, mm -hmm. former... Uh, and then the course is offered by Nairobi University mm. Technology Engineering in Technology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after he finished all that course and he finished and graduated 
Imagine the Kenyan engineers refuse to register them that they are not even recognizing that course which mm. offered by New York University is a technical university. And then do, th there's no promotion and you cannot be given the position he's supposed to. He works with the parasitical, a very big company, mm -hmm. which uh, I want to mention. And then he was denied that chance. And he suffered, and he, it cost him a lot of money. So the and engineer's the board, the engineer's board does not recognize this particular that, degree uh, from yes. a recognized university. Yes, some and an, an, an uh, degree in, in, in technology, engineering degree in technology, mm -hmm. offered by Nairobi University, technical university, because it, it come under them. Mm. And then when they come to register, and then the board refused to register, and then the guy suffered for almost four years struggling to see if he can make uh, uh, maybe to promotion yep. mm. within the system. So this, uh, that's why I said, Mr. Mugo, you're, you're right to uh, advise Kenyans. Mm. And I really like this program. Mm. And it is good also to uh, tell parents that they should also know where they're taking their kids. But then yeah. let me ask you, Mohammed. So this one, yes. you're talking about a, an institution that is old. It's formerly the, the Kenya Polytechnic. Yes. That is now Technical University. Yes. That's offering a program offered by the University of Nairobi. I mean, what other yeah. due diligence, my brother, do you require to do? Surely. Just those two. One thing, you, they advertise a course, and you know that this is already a, 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 a university that is coming under Nairobi University, Technical mm. course under them. Mm. And then they offer the course. And uh, uh, people paid a lot of money to it, and then at the last minute, somebody somewhere just stay on it and say, no, we can't recognize this because it is challenging in other engineering departments. So that's what I'm and asking, was, Mohammed. Yes. So in the case of, of your brother who has gone through what he has gone through, what due diligence could he have done? Uh, uh, nothing. He went through and asked for these guys, and they told told, no, we don't recognize them, period. That's all. Mm. Yes. Ah, that's a tough one. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And the, the, this technical, these other colleges, institutions in, in uh, various uh, counties and uh, maybe, yep. uh, there are, they are those national polytechnics which yep. used to be given them, uh, they are accredited to offer internal certificates. Mm. National polytechnics, that is uh, Nairobi, Maiden, Nairobi Polytechnic, Mombasa, and yep. Kisumu. Yep. The only three. But later on, they added uh, Eldoret, I think so. Mm. And then you can find other colleges, other institutions, like uh, technical institutions in other parts of Kenya, mm. uh, offering, and the Ministry of Education, offering internal certificate, which is not recognized and which they are not authorized to offer. That's true. For so those, maybe, who. Uh, never attained a grade of uh, joining diploma directly for national examination. That is external exam. Mm. But internal, uh, uh, apart from those like CPA and uh, CP, C, 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 other, 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 other area, which is different from uh, uh, this other exam. Mm. Then you find somebody have a certificate in a, from a college in a village somewhere, and then the same the same certificate is used to employ somebody somewhere because he has a godfather or maybe has uh, somebody to push through. <laughs> mm. And they don't even clarify it. And yeah. then somebody comes to you in a work environment, then the person cannot even have a... a, a they have no idea. The, a, no we can't cares. differentiate A from B. Thank you very much, Mohammed, for I your call. I'm now I'm, I'm, I'm working with a high institution, in a healthy institution somewhere. Mm. But it's very painful when you find somebody did maybe uh, information and uh, 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 we call it record, mm. record system. And in the hospital, and cannot even go to computer and click maybe uh, just a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 cannot save file. Asante, Mohammed. Thank you, Mohammed. Let's hear from Jane in Kisi. Jane, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. I've just gotten your number and I wanted to share some concern with you if you can help. Mm. I had a student who was studying a uh, faculty of education in Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. uh, he did his uh, three-year uh, course that went for uh, teaching practice at some uh, school in, in Yala. Mm -hmm. Then when they went back to finish their fourth year, they, uh, they were told that their, their results to let them go to the next year were missing. 
Mm-hmm. Then, unfortunately, the students, there were over 300 students, and uh, uh, there was a, a strike. Then they were sent home mm. uh, that they'll be recalled. Up to now, uh, they've not been uh, recalled. So I was How long like, have they been out of school? From 2019, end of it, when they were from uh, the teaching practice, mm. the corona year up till now, and they've not been recalled. Mm. So when I inquired from somebody from the university, they were saying that uh, that's a Senate issue, mm. and they'll just have to wait. Okay. So the, yeah. the issue so I don't here know how is it will work. Yeah. the results from the third year have somehow yes. mysteriously disappeared. And so now... Yes, you know, from the university, so they they can't arrest the situation. And you know, if something like that happens, the the students strike. So they strike and they were sent home that they'll be recalled. Mm. Up till now, the students' fate are not yet known. Mm. You know, you, you know, results don't just disappear. It yes. is Yes. Especially for many. For many at one time. Yes. You can't yeah. misplace 300 results. Mm. I yeah. think w- when you are advised that the Senate is the right, I think, yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. But this is something the Senate can resolve, but this is something that the ministry should also be asked to investigate. Mm. Because you cannot just stay out of college indefinitely. If they were suspended, if they were expelled, whatever the decision that was made, they should be informed mm. so that they can know what yeah. other steps to take. But this is, they're in limbo. And uh, yeah. yes, this is something you should pursue further the, 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 that that's the best advice we can give you then how how in which place now that uh, it's the university where i went uh and they told me that we'll wait for uh, an, an sms and students are just at home no no mm-hmm. keep, the, keep asking and, you know, this are, it's not just the university they, they will it, push you to the yeah. senate and and they're not pushing you to a body that doesn't function actually it is a senate decision mm. Yes, and if, if, if you can find a way of writing to the Senate, communicating with the Senate, then that is what you need to do. Why do you think we have members of Parliament, my dear? It is such issues that you give the member of Parliament to push. That need to be addressed. Yes, because that is one of the things that they can do. So, you know, now me, I'm a parent and I'm ignorant of where to start, what to do. Stress your member of Parliament. Oh, okay. And the student as well. This is a third year student. This is uh, somebody who should also be able to take up this mantle and follow up for themselves. Uh, yeah, they should be able to act, at least do something and do the running around and come back with a solution. I mean, we're not talking about somebody who's just joined a child. The, uh, first year. Mm. There's somebody who's been to third year, has even gone to teaching practice, was coming back for the fourth yeah. year to complete. This is somebody who should also yeah. tell them also, Afanya Kaziyake Be active. Oh. Thank you very much, Jane, for your call. We'll be picking some more calls when you come out of this break. This is Kenya's biggest conversation time for a break on KTN Home at 9 minutes to 8 o'clock. Reminding you about jobs.standardmedia.co.ke, a portal by the Standard Group, jobs.standardmedia.co.ke. Log on there and you find all the jobs that have been posted. These are authenticated jobs, all right? They're on a portal that is actually one that you can rely on. This is the Standard uh, Media group so jobs the standard media.co.ke some of the latest jobs a trainer for emergencies and resilient livelihoods by action aid one day to apply communications and outreach officer for african center for technology studies uh, this is a one day to apply as well trainer for women rights one day to apply trainer for global contact solutions designer uh, front end developer office assistant back end developer senior ios developer a professor or associate professor or senior lecturer or counseling psychology clinical psychology they is African Nazarene University is looking for you. Senior lecturer, civil engineering, all those jobs.standardmedia.co.ke. We'll be back shortly. Twenty-four-seven around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM. It's time to answer questions that are worthwhile. The Big Quiz Show is here. Register to play from the comfort of your home by SMSing the word JOIN to 23774. Then watch the live show on KTN every Sunday from 8 p.m. where you could have a chance to win a melee. The fastest and most accurate answers are guaranteed to win. The Big Quiz Show, Sundays at 8 p.m. only on KTN. We've been all through it, you know, 
We go to school, study hard, get the much deserved grades and celebrate our graduation. Then reality hits us. We get to the job market and we simply don't know where to start off. Thankfully, by visiting jobs.standardmedia.co.ke, your next career breakthrough could be a click away. Get the best in career advice, employment opportunities, internships, part-time jobs, CV writing and interview coaching. Give your career the much needed lift on jobs.standardmedia.co.ke. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Right, six to eight. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Let's go back to the phone line. Sebastian in Thika, good morning. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Welcome to the Situation Room. Oh, thank you. So there's also this big problem now in biomedical sciences. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, these are like people who have studied about uh, the virus, the bacteria, like people who could really right now be explaining uh, about these virus huh? yeah mm -hmm. but then you study like biochemistry and uh, all these other courses mm. but after you graduate now there's another body i think it's something kenya medical laboratory yeah? mm. and they again impose another certificate for you to work in any of these uh, research institutions they advertise all jobs using they require you to get another certificate before you can apply. And that certificate again requires you to take additional courses back at the university. Mm -hmm. So every time you apply for a job, you are automatically disqualified just on the basis of not having these these other certificates, mm -hmm. which was not there when you are in a certain study. So you're finding a bunch of people who could be doing research in medicine, on malaria, on the virus opting out going to just choosing to go and uh, do other things mm. yeah there's an issue here that perhaps needs to be addressed it's and that is understanding what these courses are you see when you're talking about lab lab technology as it's offered at the kenya medical uh, uh institutions uh, yeah people who go for those courses are required to actually sit for those exams that by the time they graduate they already have that certification that is required by that board that looks after lab technologists that's what they're called if you then study biomedical sciences biomedical sciences have a greater relevance when it comes to research now yeah. this isn't an odd requirement you will study law but if you don't go to uh, what we call law school or the kenya uh, school of law you will not be licensed to actually practice if you look at any professionals, professional studies, there will be a professional body that requires you to sit for a certain exam before you can be certified to practice with them. It is a basic requirement for any professional course. It is tedious, it is expensive, but it is something that is considered mandatory. And perhaps where the problem lies is in the advice that people are given when they're choosing the courses as to what it is that that course would lead to. Because the assumption is if you study biomedical uh, lab sciences that you can do the same thing as a lab technologist. By and large, it is true, yes. But you will find that there are certain units that perhaps aren't covered in one course and covered in another. Mm. It's just the reality of those two courses. Uh, can I? Uh, oh, so the problem is um, these, uh, these, uh, the body only recognizes units for those who are doing medical laboratory uh, science mm -hmm. yes across kenya universities so those ones who are doing biochemistry uh, genomics and all these other courses are normally left out okay. they're not they're not being allowed to take those units or they're not being given those units at the university mm. so that is what is happening yes so you're not true. giving these units at the university and after you graduate uh when you're looking for a job you are now being told you had to do those units while the university was saying it's not a must for you to do yeah, those I, think, units. I think that's a big issue because i mean yeah. at, at what point does the institution align with the certifying body because you're offering this particular unit and then you clearly know that this unit is not going to be examinable this unit is not going to be recognized 
it is recognized if all you're doing is conducting your work in research. But the problem arises that mm. if you work in a laboratory mm. and you don't have that certification by that body, mm. even if you, you will have a problem with them. Mm. So it is the body that manages lab technologies and lab related work that now require. And it is clear that the law allows them to push this particular agenda. All now, right. when but they that, push the agenda is the problem. Yeah. And they should align. There should be congruence between these professional bodies and the, and institutions. the institutions. There must be. Same thing with the engineering yeah. board we were being told by Mohammed. So somebody has actually gone. Through, there's a whole unit, a whole program that has been offered and been rolled out by university. But the engineering board does not recognize that. Yeah, And they'll only come and say oh, it after right. the fact.